All right. Thank you very much. And again, good evening. I am Alicia Thompson, Associate Vice President of Fund Development Institute. I welcome you to this, the first in our series of monthly distinguished alumni speaker series. And we begin with a few housekeeping points. Our music is furnished by IP Rights Administration and our sessions will be held on the last Monday of each month. For your feedback and to facilitate the question and answer session, we have enabled the chat function. Please feel free to join in the conversation at any point. Additional comments and suggestions may be provided via email to alumni at btvi.edu.bs. We will provide that address in the chat for easy reference. If your cameras are on, please be mindful of your background and it is always advisable to sit with your backs against a wall. Welcome and the charge. I now invite Dr. Robert W. Robertson, our president, to officially welcome you. And he will be followed by Mr. Kevin Baisden, our chairman, who will bring a brief charge to the alumni. Well, thank you, uh, Ms. Thompson, and um, welcome everyone. I'm really pleased to join you here this evening for a short uh, welcome to the BTVI alumni speaker series. I think this is a particularly important opportunity for us. We have a, we have a lot of alumni, uh, an increasing number of alumni. They're in various positions across the country, indeed across the world. Uh, we live in very technologically advanced times and reconnecting with our alumni is a really important part of our goals. I thank Ms. Thompson for her efforts in putting this on. Um, I had recently been a part of a similar initiative at a school in the United States and uh, it started small about four or five months ago during COVID and has grown every, every month since they've started this series. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm really pleased to, uh, to be here. Uh, I want to acknowledge the uh, presence of our chairman, Mr. Kevin Baisden, who has been a strong advocate and supporter of engaging alumni uh, more directly. And so we're looking forward to, uh, to doing this. And I can guarantee you that um, it will grow uh, in terms of size and impact. Um, it will have a positive effect on you as uh, individuals in terms of alumni. And what we're really trying to do is to um, reconnect you to the school and to the students. I think there's an incredible opportunity given the wealth of uh, talent in our alumni pool uh, to show, to really show our students what can be uh, available to them. And our topic tonight about linking trades and careers to entrepreneurship, I think couldn't be, couldn't be any timelier. It's a, it's, a, it's a really incredible opportunity. So I won't go on any longer. I was given strict deadlines by our host, uh, hostess. And so I will stop there. I do have a one hour PowerPoint I can show you all later, but that'll come at a different time. Thanks again very much. Have a wonderful uh, evening tonight. And I'm looking forward to our presentation and I'll, I'll pass it back to the, uh, to the Master of Ceremonies. Thank you very much. And we now invite Mr. Kevin Baston. Hi, good evening all. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that this, as you heard from the uh, moderator and Dr. Robertson, this is in fact a work in progress as we grow our alumni. I want to begin by saying it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of the launch of this alumni uh, series. I do not, I do so not only as a chairman of the BTVI board, but also as one who attended what was then the C.R. Walker Technical College and which subsequently became BTVI. After graduating from SAC with a number of GCEs, I attended uh, BTVI where I studied engineering science, technical drawing, surveying, A-level math and A-level English at what is now BTVI before going off the university. And having studied um, A-level math, I was able to begin calculus as a freshman in university as compared to taking preparatory math courses. Why am I saying that? The point is that there was a solid foundation at the institution, which along with my preparation at SAC better prepared me for university. Today, I can say that we also have a very good and solid foundation at BTVI that will produce quality students. 
I begin by thanking all of the alumni on the call, inclusive of our key keynote speaker for tonight, Pastor Ryan Be uh, Bethel, who I know not only from a BTBI perspective, but also from the many 5K, 10K, and half marathons that we've run, uh, as long as the Coral Harbor area, and also to Ms. Kedron Carey, a 2021 graduate. As you all are aware, BTVI has a critical role to play in our society. There's a huge skills gap that needs to be filled. And one of BTVI's mandate is to produce the craftsman, technician, and other tradesmen and tradeswomen that are workforce ready. And yes, even for persons who desire to pursue the engineering route. Additionally, as you discover the possibilities, a number of you would not only be competent and productive employee, but an employer. Hence, tonight's theme is very fitting. As an alumni of BTVI, our desire is for all of you to be proud of this great institution, which touch your life in some way. We encourage your feedback as to how we can make BTVI better. For those of you who may not be aware, in the United States, being an alumni of a school helps the school in many ways, and the following, the alumni following is very huge. Not only is this demonstrated through sports, with the experiences uh, many times lifelong, but also through marketing of the school, corporate and personal donations, financial or otherwise, uh, a former student becoming an instructor, having ch children attend the same school and all of this. This is something that we in the Bahamas can learn from as we grow our alumni association. We want to grow from strength to strength with your assistance in a real way. Using the Bahamian saying, we as family. To you, our alumni, we look forward to a long partnership. This can be in many ways, some of which have been highlighted in examples that I made earlier as to what takes place in the US. The feedback for improvements, personal and corporate donations, uh, curriculum formation or adjustments of curriculum to meet uh, the desires of those of you that are already in the workplace perhaps even purchase of uh, BTVI souvenirs, marketing of BTVI, mentoring of students, and so many other things. There's also the opportunity to provide work experience for our students, being a member and being a member of our professional advisory committees. In closing, I thank the BTVI organizing committee led by Ms. Alicia Thompson and you, our graduates and alumni. We look forward to a long-term partnership and a great alumni speaker series, which provides the opportunity not only to showcase our graduates, but also to bring inspiration to our students and to fellow alumni. Enjoy the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Basin. And for those who are joining us now, you are able to communicate with us via chat. So kindly send your messages via chat, any questions that you may have. In addition to that, we always want feedback. So feel free to email us at alumni at btvi.edu.bs. That is alumni at btvi.edu.bs. Now for the introduction of our speaker. This evening's guest speaker is a 1995 alumnus of ITC, now BTVI. He started his career at a small satellite company, moved to the Bahamas Telecommunications Company, better known as Patelco, and then he started his own company, SatSound, in 2001. He is now a successful electronic systems contractor and the owner of Touch Control Limited. It is my pleasure to welcome to address you now, Mr. Ryan Bethel our guest speaker for this evening. Have a pleasant good evening to all. It is most certainly a privilege and a great pleasure to have been invited by my alma mater, BVI, formerly ITC, to be your speaker. Especially when so many great persons have passed through the halls of this great institution. I stand on the established protocol, but would like to especially highlight Mrs. Alicia Thompson, the Associate Vice President who has been and continues to be the driving force behind the BTVI Alumni Association, of which I am a proud member. 
I am delighted to have been invited to share on my leap from employee to entrepreneurship. I was raised in a single parent home from the age of six years old when my parents got divorced. So of course, from that point, not everything was a bed of roses. But my mother was a, the, sing, the best single mother that one could ever ask for. My mom and dad were big on education and continual advancement as she herself was the first of many things in this country. We were taught that when life threw us lemons, to make lemonade, and that we did. With this train of thought ingrained in me, forward movement through education and the process of continuing to advance myself and doing the best with whatever was in my hands became my way of life. During my teen years in school, I was quite uh, naturally a smart kid. However, along the way, I became a class clown and then ventured into becoming a rebellious youth. I was always very good with my hands and could have taken three broken things and make one good one. I was sure from school that working with my hands was the way for me. I said in my senior year that I wanted to be a marine mechanic, one who fixed boats and boat engines. But then I soon realized that I didn't like my hands being dirty. My first stakes of entrepreneurship actually came to me in school and purely by accident. John Edwards was my former classmate at Queens College. And he asked me uh, one day about some cookies I had that I had brought to school. And he said, uh, can I have one? I said, uh, give me 50 cents and I will give you one. The cookies were so tasty that he asked me what else I had in my bag. I had a corned beef sandwich, which he of course asked about and I said $1. By the time I was done with him, I had $5 in my pocket and he asked me what's for lunch tomorrow. That was the beginning of my very first business venture. And before long, I had 10 consistent everyday customers. Here I am in grade 10, doing $50 worth of sales per day and pocketing $30 per day after my expenses. In 1984, I was making $150 per week at school while working just a mere 11 hours per week. This may not sound like much money to you, but minimum wage at that time was $75 per week, a reality which I soon discovered upon graduating from school. I took advantage of a school lunch program that was not very good. And I've been, and, and, and so I made sure, look here, so let me tackle this and see how I can make me uh, some money here. Okay, so, so, so what I did, I decided since so much persons like my lunches, I need to capitalize on this. I had 10 orders per day. And on special occasions, I took 15 as I wanted my quality to remain the same. I was called the lunch lady food vendor, and all sorts of names. But there was one name I was most certainly never ever called, and that was broke. <laughs> I actually paid either teacher or parent to purchase my Burger King, Kentucky, or whatever I felt like having for lunch every day. And most days after school, I went bowling, all of course paid for by me. I was able to buy my own school uniform, my shoes, and the whole nine yards. Most of my classmates wanted what I had, but were not willing to do what I did. I had to get up at 5 a.m. every day to bake cookies, make corned beef and tuna salad, toast bread, and put two slices of bread in the Ziploc bags to keep them fresh, put the corned beef and the, and the salad, the tuna salad in separate Tupperware bowls. Our sandwich, sandwiches were made on site. Our sandwiches made at home by lunch would be mushy. All of us know that. I also had to cut up tomatoes, lettuce, and put them in separate bowls also. I had a school janitor on staff, my first employee, and paid them $2 per day just to set up a little table under the steps by the biology room, just across from the school cafeteria. I understood early location, location, location. While everyone was sleeping, I was preparing. While everybody else enjoyed lunch, I was serving lunch. And while everyone else was chilling out, I was putting my orders for the next day. I saw another avenue to make more money. As I noticed in most classes, someone was always forgetting a pencil, a pen, a protractor, graph paper, etc. I went down to the bookstore in Palmdale and bought packs of everything. I sold pencils for 10 cents. 
And I had a buyback policy, which most persons took advantage of, which was after class, you can give me the pencil back and I give you five cents back. I did the same exact thing with all of my items and made 200 to 300% profit over the life of a pencil and protractor set, et cetera. Nobody was more upset than me when school closed because school for me was just not about education. It was even more so about making money. My first job was after I graduated from high school at Super Value. And I worked six days a week, over 40 hours per week and got paid $72 after NIB deductions. It was at this job that I quickly realized that being indoors all day was not for me. And definitely this money was too slow. I then got a job at a satellite company making $110 per week. Still a far cry from my almost $200 I was making in school when I combined all my business ventures. But I was in love with this technical job. And before long, I was training all the new techs and became the go-to tech for everything that anyone else could not solve. Only problem I had was the money was too slow. But I knew that was the place for me to be trained. I myself did some training on my own to get more knowledge. And it wasn't long before I myself was moonlighting and doing my own little satellite thing. You all know how Bahamians do it, especially in the area that the company I was employed at was not interested in. That was not at all a bed of roses. It was not all a bed of roses as there were challenges along the way. The challenges I had along the way was unfortunately at this company, there was no room for advancement and very limited possibilities. And hence my move to BTC after four years at this establishment. I realized that I needed to be professionally trained and entered success training college and did amazingly well in the classroom. But this being confined to books alone was not working for me. It was at this point that I quickly realized that college is not for everybody. I am in no way opposed to education as you will see later on in my presentation, but just keenly aware that if everyone is the chief, who will be the technicians? Who will be the electricians? Who will be the plumbers? After some six years in the world, I got married and now had a family. So funds were even more so limited and I knew that I needed more. Another challenge I was having at BTC is even though I was an excellent worker, I still had to put in a full time at every scale because I didn't have any formal training. This was of great concern to me. And I realized that not having some formal training was actually taking me down the slow road to advancement and promotion. But I needed a school that could work with me while at the same time being fully employed. I checked out Industrial Training College, now BTVI, and I realized with some sacrifices, sacrifices and adjustments that I could make this happen. Classes were at 6 p.m. until 9 p.m., three nights per week, and Saturday mornings from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. I worked through my lunch hour on my school days and got off at 4 o'clock, picked up my kids, helped them with their homework, and left at 5.30 when my wife got at home and went down to BTVI. While at BTVI, I was a very mature student, as I didn't have time to play especially with a, a great sacrifice being undertaken by my family and I. My experiences at BTVI was an eye opener to, to so many things as it took me into another realm of electronics as I knew it. Before BT, BTVI, I was the fix it guy. But while at BTVI, I became the guy who also understood the inner workings of the components. Why I really love BTVI is because it was hands on and not just book knowledge. We read about the ins and outs of circuits in the books, but in the labs, we built those circuits from scratch and made them work. On Saturday, we'd get to class early and leave late, just to sort of another circuit or to test the voltage drops to ensure all was perfect. I purchased my own uh, personal meters and was testing and probing everything that I could get my hands on. All of this knowledge came in extremely handy because even though I was employed at BTC, I had my own little home business, Ryan Satronics. And I specialized in satellite sales, services, repairs, and installation. I was now able to fix satellite motors, sensors, polar rotors, 
things that were one shot and done. I was opening and changing bad resistors, which automatically increased my profits all because of this one class at BTVI. BTVI was definitely a life changer and a game changer for me. But truth be told, the class that did the most for me and my small business was the entrepreneurship class, believe it or not. I was making more money due to my newfound skills. However, it was the entrepreneurship class that gave me a much better understanding of the business. For example, if I did a job and charged $500 and spent $200 on parts and the remaining was $300 for labor, before BTVI, I just assumed that I made a profit of $300. My teacher said to me, no, you didn't. And he said things like, how did you get them? And I said, by my truck. He said, well, the truck has to be paid. He said, does the truck have needs? I said, yes, it has gas, need oil, and tires. He said, that has to be taken care of. He said, what about the money to buy supplies and replenish stock? He said, what about your plane ticket to go and buy stuff and rental and car and hotel? What about your time you take off your job? What about the time to pick up your workers and drop them back home? What about your salary? How much do you pay yourself? I had no idea as I just took what I wanted at that time. This didn't give me targeted goals. But once I put myself in an hourly rate, like he suggested, I had to push harder to make what I wanted while building the company's savings. Do you have a business account? I said, no. He said, open one and deposit every dollar. Open a check and come. Write checks. We were taught even how to balance a checkbook at BTVI in this class. He said, give receipts for every sale. You need to have three years of financials to get funded from the bank. Things I never knew. This class prepared me for the real world of entrepreneurship as it made me to understand the true value of what was really coming in. The sacrifice of one year of, of a course in electronics cut two years at BTC and got me a faster promotion. It also made my home business much more efficient and gave me the true financial understanding of the monies and the operation. This course was the great, was the giant stepping stone to my next move, which came later on down to full entrepreneurship. Based on where I wanted to go and what I wanted to accomplish in the future, I immediately began implementing the advice from the entrepreneurial class, even changing the business name from Ryan Satronic, which was limited to satellite even electronics and which was still a viable business but was changing rapidly. The move from the big satellite dish with all the moving parts uh, to the small direct TV dish with no moving parts was looming and getting closer. When it finally came years later, it killed the service side of the business, which 85% of the money came from. However, because I changed the name a few years out to Satsang, which was now about satellite and surround sound, which would be the next big electronic move, we were well positioned and ready when the big satellite edition market was shut down. The entrepreneurial class at BTVI prepared me for this, as we were also taught to study the market and watch the trending shifts. What I had learned from BTVI years prior kept my home business and later helped me to make the jump from employee to employer. A bit of advice that my instructor gave to me is, your business needs to be launched while you are on your job. Grow it as best you can. And when the time is right, it has to be able to pay your existing job salary plus what you were making on the side in order to maintain the same lifestyle. Seven years after graduating from BTVI, the call to go full-time came. Only six months in the opening of our very first storefront in Sandy Port, Old Town Mall, the business prior to moving into Sandy Port, getting ready for this, was very prosperous and I was doing $100,000 worth of business per year while maintaining my job. I had built up over 400 clients by this time. The same boy with no degree, but a trade in my head. I was, however, reluctant to come full-time as after building the storefront, furnishing it out, purchasing the equipment, hiring staff, I became a bit apprehensive as being cash-strapped now, I was using my salary from BTC to pay the workers. We had to get a $50,000 loan from the bank in order to fit out and build a storefront. And once again, 
because of the information given to me by my entrepreneurship teacher years prior, you need three years of financials, we were able to secure the financing. All because I took my entrepreneurial teacher's advance. I had this, and guess what? I still got the original case with the original records in it. All because I listened to my teacher. People want what you have, but they don't know what you go through. As fate would have it, I was forced to go full time. And within the first week, I secured a very lucrative contract, which we wouldn't have gotten if I was on the job at BTC. As it was me who had the knowledge to sell our first home theater project, and I was also the lead installer. The first three te technicians I hired, I sent them to BTVI and paid for it to be trained and work with their school schedules. To this day, we still require a minimum of BTVI certification of completion in electronics. I was now an employer who now had employees. It was no longer a nine to five job for me, but rather a 7.30 to 7.30 or whenever it was done. I came into early to the office to get a jump start of ordering, surfing online for new technologies, et cetera. From nine to five, I was on the road as a lead tech and I had to train my guys. When they went to lunch, I was in the office working on proposals. At five, when everyone left, in the beginning, I had to close, return calls, and prepare for the next day. On Friday, I had to do payroll, bank runs, et cetera. And I had to do many one-day trips to Miami to purchase equipment. And you all know a one-day trip is busted right up. But I still had to come to work the next day. Being an employer is no easy task, especially in the first three years. Many times during the early years, I had employees who made more than I did. Yes, I'll say it again. They made more than I did because sometimes I did not get paid. When anyone was sick, I had to fill it. Whenever the ball was dropped, I had to pick it up. Many a days, my, my mind went back on my entrepreneurial classes at BTVI, which assured me that if I kept on pushing and keeping things in order, the growth will come. I owe my success outside of the blessings of the Lord or my ability to stay the course, even when the course at times is not visible or unfeasible to my time at BTVI. I would say to any young up and coming entrepreneur, that you need to have unwavering faith in your business and be willing to put in the work even when the rewards are not coming as fast as you would prefer. Anything worth having is certainly worth the many sacrifices. If you don't believe in your own vision, nobody else certainly will. You have to be willing to work with that little bubble of phone that you have now because investing $1,200 in an iPhone is a no-no. The business needs that money. Lavish vacations in the first three years is a no-no. Restocking of your shelves are more beneficial. Loving yourself in the beginning is a no-no because your business is like an infant. You need to take care of it first so later on it can take care of you. Your rewards will come, but after you've endured for a while, it takes a lot of your personal time and sacrifice to grow your business. If you are unwilling to do these things, then you need to remain an employee. After nine years in Sandy Port, we transitioned to Old Fort Bay Town Center, where we have been for the last nine years. Satsang moved from Sandy Port to Old Fort Bay. The climate of change was, was, was nice, was, was again approaching. And hence, after a year in Old Fort Bay Town Center, we changed the name to Touch Control Limited. As satellite was coming to an end, and the name Sat Sound limited us to satellite and sound. The market was shifting towards smart home technology. And hence, in 2013, Touch Control Limited emerged. Once again, by the time the shift took place, we were years ahead and fully trained and ready for the shift. At this point, we had employees who were graduates of DeRay with a bachelor's degree in electronics and, an and another who had an associate from BTV in electronics and everybody else had a certification from BTBI. Me, myself, I was the first Bahamian CDO. That's the Custom Electronic Design and Installation Association, an internationally recognized organization. I was their first Bahamian certified technician, first electronic systems contractor. I was also the first Lutron Bahamian PSP, that's a preferred system provider. 
I was also the first ESPA, Electronic System Professional Alliance Certified Behemoth. So much, there's, there's so many more, which I am actively certified of and, and still keep on going because in this field, every three days, you have to take tests or just keep your credits going. It was that one class in 1995 at BTVI. That was the first step to my numerous international titles. The big hurdles we had in business was when the, when the recession hit in 2007 and we weathered that storm and we just learned to trim any excess. I must say our biggest challenge has been the date when COVID-19 entered the Bahamas on March 20th, 2020. I'll never forget that date. And we were sent home for three months. We, like most businesses, are still in the restructuring phase and had to make some very hard decisions to remain open. But nevertheless, we are very optimistic and believe the worst is behind us. What is lost is lost and is pointless crying over spilt milk. We have remained firm for almost 20 years and we plan to grow even bigger sooner than later. I have absolutely no regrets because the things I have been able to accomplish as an entrepreneur, no job would have ever given to me. Here is an honest tip to all vying entrepreneurs. There is no job that has any plans whatsoever to make the employees rich. They will pay you what you are worth and in some, some a little more in some instances. That, however, has a cap limit. But an employer has no cap limit as an employer has the opportunity to create wealth for themselves. But before reward comes great sacrifice. But great sacrifice via entrepreneurs equals greater returns. I leave you with two scriptures today. Proverbs 14 and 23 says, work brings profit, but mad talk leads to poverty. Matthew 22 and 14 says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called to be employees. Few are chosen to be entrepreneurs. I made the leap from employee to employer successfully because I took that first sacrificial step and went to BTVI back in 1995. And you too can make that leap through your own preparation and become BTVI certified or by working towards your BTVI associate's degree. The more prepared you are, will make your own transition from employee to employer so much more smoother. Take your first step today towards your entrepreneurial pursuits tomorrow. I am living proof of what a BTVI education can bring one to. If you are willing and able to lose some sleep and give up some free time in order to gain more free time in the not so very distant future, you too can have this story. BTVI did for me what I would have not been able to do for myself because of one electronic certification course with the greatest entrepreneurship class ever, which was the spark that I needed to light my entrepreneurship leap from employee to employer. Don't delay, apply today for one of the exciting courses at BTVI. The world cannot exist without carpenters, masons, tilers, technicians, plumbers, media personnel, etc. The minimum requirement to work at our company, Touch Control Limited, is a BTVI at minimum certification in electronics. I took my leap some years back, and graduated in 1995 from this great institution. Now, today, I'm still benefiting from the fruit of my labor at BTVI. I was amongst the first to be awarded the BTVI Distinguished Alumni Honor. I made this, I, I so proud of this. I'm so proud of this. And 26 years later, we are still beneficiaries of my sacrifice to better myself. Education is the key to your success. If a tradi tra traditional college is not for you, I 100% recommend the BTVI route, BTVI route, sorry, where you can obtain professional development courses, diploma programs, certification program, associates of applied science program. BTI, if you are like me, you can truly change your life. And the thing about it, the prices are so affordable. Help yourself by signing up for class a day. 
I, I wish I was young all over again. When I look at all the exciting media classes, media is the way to go. You young people who listen, let me tell you, media is the way to go. Everything is over IB. Everything is over the internet. You need to go down there and get certified, certification, certification, certification. I want to thank you all so much for giving me this opportunity to share my story of how I leaped from being an employer, employee, to an entrepreneur. It's been more than 20 years. I'm almost, I'm 20 years in full time. But if I count the years when I was doing my thing, it's over 30 years. And I attribute my success in business, in entrepreneurship, in the electronic field, back to BTVI. Thank you so much. God bless you. Let's make it happen, man. We lock in technicians. I know. I own a business. I have to turn away so many young guys because they just don't have the basic skills. It's not about the A, B, C, D, G. All that's good. Go to BDVI. Get a trade and get working. God bless you. And thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ryan. Oh, what, what a story. What a journey. Please, I am inviting you to, if you have questions, if you have questions, I'm seeing a comment, great remarks, great story, quite inspirational. Ryan, I heard uh, there's someone else who said that we need to get you in here. We need to get you in the front of an orientation audience, a graduation audience. I've seen the comments about your humor. So you're down to earth and, and, and quite humorous. Ryan, we are extremely proud of you. And uh, please, if you have any questions for Ryan, let me know, let me know, send it in the chat. Ryan, you made a comment that was quite interesting. You said you were taught in your entrepreneurship class that you ought to launch while you're on the job. So Key, if you can please also spotlight Ryan, you said launch while you're on the job. Now you made that leap from employee to entrepreneur. And we know that sometimes we get real tired. You know, we're like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired and I, I just know how to bake cake really well. So I'm just gonna leave my job and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bake cake. What, what is, tell us a little more. What, why should I stay on my day job and, and bake cakes at night? I, I, that's an excellent question. I, you know, I had a friend of mine who uh, a couple of years ago, he was about, he's going to leave his job at Atlanta. So he came to talk to me about it. And I was like, I was like, Hey man, yeah, I know you're making some good money on the side, but is the money you're making enough to cover that salary you make at Atlantis and the extra money you make? He did not think of that. All he thought about was his overflow. See your job can pay your bills because you, 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 you need, you need something coming in. And, and you have to, a lot of persons, that's why a lot of persons fail because, you know, you need something coming in. You need something coming. I had to literally the first year take, take my salary that I was making at, at Bedelco and, and pay people. And then I had to go break. You see? So suppose I had to just jump right up. No, no, you got to build your clientele. By the time I came to, to uh, uh, open my business, uh, I had over 400 customers that I built up over a period of time. So you, 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 cannot, you cannot make that leap because you're making them good cake and everybody liking all that. But are you making enough cake to cover that salary and to cover your extra money? So that's the mistake a lot of persons made. But I was glad that he came to me. And after I told him that, he ain't leave that job yet. It has to call you. It has to force you to leave. Uh, where business is so good, it has to make you. It, 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 my, my entrepreneur teacher said, let it make you leave. And that's what happened to me. Ryan, I know that many times when we graduate, we say, you know, this is the end. I've flipped that tassel and, and no more school for me. But as I heard you speak about moving from, from working on satellites and now you are touch control, it seems as if you had to do a lot of continuous training and on the job training and retraining. When you spoke about the, the uh, qualifications that some of your employees also have, tell me, why is it so important that we just not rest on our laurels and, and rely on that degree that we have on the wall? Uh, um, the, the, the world we live in is constantly changing. And certainly the, the business that, that, that I am in, I've watched it change three times. And if I did not keep up with certifications and keep learning, if you move away from this business for a year and you come back, 
you will be lost. So you have to, you must continually advance of this continual change. It, 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 it's always changing. That's why I always tell clients when you buy something, you know, enjoy it till you die out of it. Because by the time you finish installing it, it could be out of date. Something new is out. And I, I and I saw one of the questions there about about customer service. I like I like to address that. One thing I, I I'm really, really, really heavy on is customer service. I would prefer to lose a job than for a person to be unhappy. I'll remember in the in the early days when when one of my uh one of my kids was in the business with me from early and and they told a customer a price and this price was like fifteen hundred dollars off and the person was there and the customer knew you know but I decided you know I'm gonna let this be a teachable moment and after the customer left I showed them there and I said oh my god it will be I said yeah I said but we're gonna honor it and we're gonna do it and you know that client asked me when we finished the job she said man, I know ain't no way in the world y'all could have made money off this. And I said, yeah, we did. I said, we made a mistake and we on it. And you know what he said? I, I just can't believe you did that. I just can't believe because at the end of the day, we prefer our name to be intact. If we say we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And it means that we have to lose. We will learn from that and move on to the next. Customer service is key. You need your customers. There is no job. And this is another one my entrepreneurship teacher told me. There's no job like the next job. I have a question about, I see a question here about soft skills. And certainly I know that the services that you offer out there, touch control, that's a, sounds like a very specialized type service. So I'm sure that it's a, a service is limited, it's offered in limited places. And so people would tend to think, now listen, I have this special skill and you need me. So what do you say to people as it relates to soft skills? How important are soft skills when you're operating a business? Oh, that's extremely important. We, we know in the time we're living in now, everything is computer-based. You know, if, if, you don't, if you don't know how to cut on a phone and uh, you don't know how to uh, use Word and all that, you, you, you'll be lost because it, it is continual. Everything, you know, back uh, 10 years ago, I needed two guys on a truck. Okay, because we had big TVs, you had to lift and all that. That's changed. We now have one person in, in each vehicle because a 65 inch TV you can live by is so light now. But when you go to set up this TV now, it's just not plug and play any longer. You have to go into that setting, set up the smart hub, set these clients don't know how to do it. You have to set up their Netflix account. You have to do all these things. And guess what? You are paid a premium to do that because they do not know how to do it. So you, you have to always be computer savvy and everything is done online those stuff stuff that you 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 it's a must it's a must you, you and you cannot just rely on oh i'm the, the only person who knows you're the only person today this thing changes the information is just so readily available sorry and so what i'm getting from you is yes it's okay to have those technical skills whereby you can do all these fancy stuff but having the soft skills then is to be able to have the patience and to be able to, to communicate with these persons when you go to them. And uh, there's some people who may not necessarily have the best attitude, but also knowing how to, to deal with that. All right, I see a question here that's asking how difficult it is to open a business account. Ooh, boy, things have changed so much in the banking industry right now that uh, sometimes they want to try to give me a problem. And then I got to remind them. <laughs> uh, um, going into business is, is uh, you can easily get a business license, but then you have to spend some money if you want to be incorporated. And then you know, when you want to work for places like Atlantis, then you know you got to have a million dollars worth of insurance. And, and there, there's a lot of costs that behind the scene that persons are not aware of. But you know it's easy. You could if you want to you know sell coconuts on the side of the road, you could get a, a business license for that. It's uh, what, where the challenge comes is when you need funding now to uh, go to the bank to get some money to make that move where you want to now do a storefront. You need some money, and uh, that was you know we had to get fifty thousand dollars. But you know back in two thousand when I was some big money, and uh, but uh, because we did what we had to do, having our records in place, and we were able to secure that. So I'm telling you, if you if you're on the side of the road selling coconuts, write a receipt. Every person that comes, if they don't want it, you write it for you. You need to have records. There's a question here. Is it safe to say 
that good attitudes, having good attitudes is important when you're a business person. Extremely important. Uh, attitude is, is key. Uh, you know, our employees, they all know, you know, we have a team, but we need our clients. Actually, our clients actually feel like they're the only person we work for. Like there's nobody else. Because we, we need to have an attitude. We need to respect your house. You know, you're going into a home that is worth 14, 15 million dollars. Take your shoes off. You know, if you don't want to take your shoes off, put on the booties we provided you with. You, you, you need to have that attitude. If, they, if, they, if they're not ready, respect that. Okay? But the clock's still running. You know, sometimes you go to a client house and, oh, I'm not ready for you yet. I mind. Clock running. You, you, you know, say, if you want to have me here for an hour and you want me to do a little consulting session and all that, clock running. So the attitude, it, it needs to be right as, as uh, persons look to that, to see how you, how you want to treat them. You made the leap from employee to entrepreneur. Please, what was your biggest fear when you made that leap? Ooh, boy, uh, my biggest fear was not having a paycheck that I could collect every Friday. My wife would tell you when I went to, to Botelco, it's my aim to be there forever. I said, I could be the longest employee there and I could live the, I could break record. Uh, we're getting paid that little thing afterwards, you, you know, but that was my biggest fear. But when I, but if I really sat down and look at the numbers, you know, while I was at Botelco, I was doing a hundred thousand dollars worth of business while I was at Botelco. So if I was doing that with just having time, uh, lunchtime, after work, Saturday, Imagine what I could do. I was there full time. So that was the mindset that I went in there with. And that, that overrode that fair. But still, there was some challenging times. But it, it all worked out. We, the things we were able to do, I would have never been able to do these things if I was working at Bedelco. Never, never, ever. You spoke about being a boss. You also spoke about reinvesting in the business. So now if I'm a boss, right? Um, why can't I just start driving my Escalade and buy? <laughs> I am the boss. Well, what's the big deal with that? Oh boy, I, I, I look at business as I, I look at my employees as being children, my children. And you have to take care of your children. And it would be kind of remiss of me if I go and buy myself an Escalade and my children aren't paid. You know, I know there are a lot of business owners who do that. And this is why a lot of family business, especially black owned family business. I'm not picking, but I'm just being real. The children do not like to work for their parents because they say, oh, I ain't gonna pay you this when you live by me and you eating and I work in. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So you need to pay them. So there are times when, when uh, 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 you, I just had to make those sacrifices. I know, like I said in my presentation, for a couple of years, uh, uh, I have employees making more money than me. But it is what it is. I just had to do what I had to do. But hey, that changed over time and and God is good. But you have to make the sacrifice. I have another question here. When did you begin paying yourself? Was it in the beginning? Or did you just pay yourself a stipend? How did you work that out? Salary. Ooh. I see that for a good little while. Uh, I was getting a little something. Yeah, I was getting a little something here and there and uh uh yeah yeah I, I would i would say truly i think i was probably eight to nine years in before i was being paid what i knew i was worth i was getting something but uh yeah yeah it took about that long to really you know from all my qualifications and what i did and what i brought to the table it took a good eight nine years to get to that but once you hit that point you know it, there's no turning back I see an interesting question here, and I think it probably came out of the fact that you spoke about you were in the satellite business, but you were able to see that there were changes that were up ahead, right? So one of the, the things that led to your success was being able to anticipate change and to watch what was happening with technology. So I see a question here. What would you say to the person who sees an opportunity for a gourmet immersion business catered more so to locals entering our port and dealing with the pandemic, I recently took a visit and realized that the vendors, 
The taxis, horse and carriage is non-existent. Do you think this is a dream that should be deferred? So this person is asking about beginning a gourmet immersion business catered to locals. I, I like that. I, I wish I had time to work that. Uh, um, whenever God gives you a vision, he will always make the provision. The problem is we have to have the faith to take a chance, to take a leap. You work and you get a job, go out there on Saturdays, uh, try test the waters, go out there in the evening. So you're going to have to give up your personal time to make this thing happen. I wish I had two of me. I, I, can, I can make a killing just of cleaning guy in my neighborhood. You, you know, there are just so many things that, that you can do. It's just that you have to put in the extra time. That's what a lot of people are not willing to do. They don't want to put in the extra time. They just want a nine to five. That's all they want. Nine to five is what you want. Nine to five is what you get. I say to you, that, could, that sounds like an awesome idea. When you see an opening, you need to move. You need to move. And that's how I've always been able to stay on top of the game. I don't waste time. Once I see an open, I see things start to make a turn. I remember when we were opening the business, uh, uh, somebody walking the store, we were building the home together and a person walking to us said, we'll never make money because all people could do is come in here and watch TV. Suppose I listen to them. I know what vision I had. A person's coming here seeing and saying, I want this. And that's exactly what happened. It's just knowing the market, knowing when to shift. Uh, you, you, you remember then behaviors like copy. Remember we had a 99 cent breakfast? Those people really wasn't making no money, you know. They were just, oh, no, no, no. but when you really come the course, I, I always looked at it and said, how can they be making money? You would have to sell a thousand breakfasts a morning. And people were just doing it, doing it. And then they finally, a lot of them failed and ran away. But the ones who consistently sold at $150, $2, they still open. Because they they uh, uh, check the everything about the business and what needed to happen. Wonderful. And I have one final question for you. This has been just so exciting. Now, you are a very modest individual, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to do a humble brag. I want you to tell me what is your biggest accomplishment to share humble brag. Wow. Biggest accomplishment business-wise? You decide. Wow. You know... I would have to say business-wise, I, I, I have to give it to things like these that I was able to do on my own business, but being able to go to schools like Garvin Times, a school that we uh, sponsored for many years and is to go there and have reading programs. They have all these different plaques from all these different schools. Uh, I think, in my opinion, that that was one of the greatest seeds I was able to be able to sow to be able to have the money and the time to go and help turn lives around because it's been 20 years and I still have kids on the street who I see and say, man, you remember you used to come to my school and read, I was going to quit school. And, and because I used to come and, and that makes me feel so good that to know that, that the, the, the very person who I touch is now making a difference. I believe, yes, you know, you like the car or house and all that kind of thing, but I believe as those seeds right there would have been the greatest ones for me because, you know, I spent two years at, at all the different different governments. Well, they did this for, for like 20 years, thousands of students. And I think that's the best thing that, that sat sound touch control would have done. Thank you very much. And I saw one final comment with which I totally concur. Very impressive presentation. And so now we are always pleased to engage our alumni and it is my pleasure to welcome our 2021 graduate, Ms. Kadrin Carey, to thank Mr. Bethel and to give alumni updates. Ms. Carey will be followed by our AVP of the Freeport Campus, Ms. Veronica Colley, with the wrap up for this evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cajun Carey, and I am proud to call BTVI um, my alma mater. I'm even prouder now that I am about to join the ranks of the distinguished 
um, Mr. Ryan Bethel. I mean, it was truly an honor to listen to you. I was intently listening and uh, I must say I was writing on little tidbits on what to do, especially with the bank account. Um, definitely going to do that. I wish to thank you for taking time out of your schedule and inspiring us and sharing how you made the incredible leap from employee to employer. I encourage you to remain BTBI strong. And now our updates. Our first announcement, I'm truly excited to say February, uh, on sorry, Friday, that's this coming Friday, July 30th, 2021, BTVI will host the 2021 drive-in graduation ceremony. This will be a full graduation ceremony and certificates, diplomas, and degrees will be given out during one of two sessions. The times of these sessions are 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. And I invite my fellow grads to come out take your time and walk across the stage. At this time, only one vehicle will be permitted per graduate and the event will be live streamed for those who can't attend from the BTVI Facebook page. So come fully dressed in your regalia and let's celebrate this important moment. For more information, we ask that you monitor your emails and please contact the registrar's office at 502 Six three hundred. BDVI's Freeport graduation is slotted for August fifth, two thousand and twenty-one, and your information will be provided shortly. Secondly, the distinguished alumni nominations that is still going on. So, do you know or are you an alum who has distinguished themselves through outstanding service, or have you done anything outstanding in your community or chosen field? Are you a leader who boasts outstanding professionalism or personal success? Then you can be one of our 2021 award recipients. To do this, you can visit our website at www.btvi.edu.bs or call the funds development at 502 six three one two or three to make your nominations today what we have done is we've extended our nominations to february sorry the friday august 5th 2021 and we encourage persons from throughout the bahamas and our graduates they're special they don't only have our skills here in the bahamas they go through the entire world so we're accepting nominees who are deserving from all over the world Thirdly, we have a raffle that's happening and everybody knows Bahamians, we love a good raffle. There's a hot summer raffle going on right now. If you spend $5, you can earn a chance to win either an air fryer or an Amazon Fire Stick. If you spend $10, you can earn a chance to win a ductless air condition unit or a 50 inch TV. To get tickets, you can call the fund department and purchase your tickets. Drawings for this event is September 5th, sorry, September 10th, 2021. So coming soon, BTVI alumni branded items and these you can purchase lanyards, hot and cold mugs, bumper stickers, and t-shirts. These will soon be on sale and we ask you to stay tuned. You can show your BTVI pride to everyone and sport all your blue and grays. Finally, we're calling all alumni. Do you need assistance with your resume writing? If so, you can send your resume to resume at btvi.edu.bs. If you would like to have your resume placed on the Department of Labor's portal or in the BTVI job placement pool, then you can contact the Office of the Student Affairs. That number is 502-6311, and they'll be happy to assist. Those are your alumni updates for today. Please feel free to contact us at alumni at btvi.edu.bs for your comments or recommendation. Now I'll call on AVP Veronica Collins of our Freeport campus, who will do the wrap ups for the evening. Good evening. Thank you, Kedra, for a beautiful vote of thanks, as well as the update that we all needed to be reminded of. 
And of course, with your thanks, I would reinforce that Reverend um, Bethel really speaks well to the fact that work brings profit. And with that, I would say it brings self-satisfaction and self-esteem. Mrs. Thompson, thank you. This is yet another positive experience through BTVI. Thank you, Dr. Robertson, for the warm and informational welcome. It surely did set the stage. Mr. Kevin Baston, Chairman of the Board, the alumni charge, of course, encourages you, the alumni. It teaches you how to take control of your destiny. And of course, you are the best pace setters for the institution. To the audience, our other employees, our um, alumni who are with us this evening, please look forward to other enlightening topics through our alumni speaker series on the last Monday of every month, as pointed out by Mrs. Thompson. And this will go on until further notice. Continue to join us each month through this recurring Zoom link. So you can always use this link to get to the um, speaker series. The alumni series, of course, encourages all alumni from all islands, all programs, and all graduating classes. You all can be speakers. If interested, you can recommend someone or you can, can or, or as well as please contact Mrs. Thompson if you know of other persons who might be interested. She can be contacted at the number that was given by Kadra, as well as her email, thompsona at btvi.edu.bs. Once again, Mrs. Thompson, you did a splendid job as our host for this organized event this evening. I am sure we are all looking forward to the next one. To all of you, continue to be safe and enjoy what is left of this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we will see you again next month. Bye. -bye.